By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are in Zandam for the Zombie Cup 2. And this is quite nice. I had the pleasure to play at this tournament. It was a lot of fun. Only eight players, but I have to be honest, I'm kind of liking these small events. You've got time to have a beer, talk with everybody, play against everybody. It's a lot of fun. And in this episode, I'm going to show you the first round from the tournament. Every week, I will be showing you a match played at the uh, Zandam Zombie Cup 2, all the way up to the final. So, uh, you know, for the for the next couple of, of six weeks, you're solid here on, on Timmy Talks if you want to follow this tournament. In the first round, we're going to watch uh, uh, Denzel versus Justin. And let me just have a look here. Oh, yes, Denzel is on a uh, red and green Ponza deck. So he's playing Stone Rains and Ice Storms. And also some Blood Moons. It's it, This deck can be really nasty. But more about that, uh, of course, in the deck deck section. And his opponent is Justin. And Justin is playing Dead Guy Ill with a Red Splash. But his deck is different than you might expect. And actually, it's got quite a lot of red cards in here. I see like seven red cards. And he's playing two Nightmares main. So that, I mean, I love that. I really, really love that. It's actually, I should call this deck Nightmares and Vampires but because he's also playing four Sangir Vampires main. So it's, I think this is a really cool list. More about that again, of course, in the deck tech section of this video, talking about that. Uh, if you check out the description below, you will find more information about the rules, but also you will find timestamps. I know that some people enjoy going to the match first, check out the deck decks later. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the descriptions below because there you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there, it'll take you straight to the game action. And I'm going to continue here with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the player on the left. That is Denzel. Let's take a look at his red-green Ponza deck. And here we see the deck of Denzel. So it's a red-green Ponza. And uh, that, of course, refers to the land removal section of this deck. He's playing four Stone Rains and four Ice Storms. And those cards, of course, combine really well with Black Vice because if you're going to deny mana of your opponent, your opponent won't be able to empty his or her hand. And that means that Vice can do a lot of work. I always think, though, in old school, you have to have some artifact removal as well because those mana rocks are simply too good. You know, they can play around your land removal with those mana rocks. And that's, of course, why he's also playing with two Crumbles and two Scavenger Folks. And he also has a Scavenger Folk and an extra Crumble on the side if he's playing for example i guess against like a fully powered deck talking about playing against fully powered decks he's also playing with three blood moons and i think when i'm looking at this deck i think those three blood moons together with the lightning bolts make it so good against those decks right i mean you can destroy lands with your ice storm stone rain you can kill the birds uh, the birds of paradise with your lightning bolts um, then you've got your blood moons to take care of those dual lands uh, you've got the, the crumbles scavenger folks to to deal with the mocks and I would almost be tempted to put more crumbles and scavenger folks in here um, And then he's also playing with some beefy creatures, right? He's got Suchis, He's got Urnams. Not too many though. And he also has quite quite some one drops He's got three script sprites of course Alana were elves and those scavenger folks I've mentioned and that's probably why he's also playing with the pendle havens What I kind of like about this deck is that he's chosen not to play with Giant Grove and Berserk. And the reason I like that is that you kind of have this effect where your opponent is expecting you to have those cards, but you don't. So your opponent is probably playing like different because they're thinking, oh, maybe he's got the Giant Grove and Berserk and he's gonna win it on the spot. I've got to try to do something here. You know, they feel the pressure, but actually you don't have those cards. So I, I, I always kind of like that. It reminds me of when you're playing blue and you keep two blue open, but you don't play counter magic at all. It's just, uh, you know, it's funny. Or you keep disenchant mana open. I mean, there are a lot of examples here to make. Anyway, this is the deck of Denzel. It's looking at as one of those decks that could win a game fairly quickly. Now, let's take a look at the deck of his opponent. And here we see the deck of Justin. So I've called it Nightmares and Vampires because he's playing with four Sengir Vampires and two Nightmares, which I absolutely love. Uh, but when I'm looking at this deck, it kind of puzzles me for the reason that he's playing with an Hypnotic Spectre and Sangiers and Nightmares. And I mean, there's not a single Dark Ritual in here, right? Or am I missing something? I see Demonic Tutor there, Mind Twist, Sinkhole, Single Sinkhole, which is funny. Um, and so this is really more a control deck, right? When you're looking at it, because he's playing with four Will-O-The-Wisps. So he's really counting kind of up on the Willows to hold the fort until he has enough mana to start playing out. Well, first the Hippie, obviously. And then he's also playing with JMD Tomes, so with three books. 
Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's kind of interesting, right? You would almost, uh, you know, expect him to maybe play with Nevenerals discs instead of maybe the Swords to Plowshares to just, you know, blow everything up, regenerate the Willows, and then, you know, he's got enough mana and he can start doing all that control stuff. But I guess, you know, the white cards, of course, are very reliable. He's got four Swords to Plowshares and four Disenchants, and that's a really good control package to kind of make sure that you don't get overrun by your opponent. So you've got all, the, all those cards to kind of control the board together with your Willows to stay long enough, uh, to stay alive long enough to kind of start doing your cool stuff, which is casting Sangir Vampires and Nightmares. <laughs> you know, that's what you want to do in life. Um, and then on top of that, he's also playing, you know, with that red package as well. He's got four Lightning Bolts uh, and also two Fire Bolts. What I always like is that combination of Lightning Bolt and Swords to Plowshares because obviously you want to use your Lightning Bolt uh, for the small stuff and then you can use your, your Swords to Plowshares for the bigger stuff or the stuff with regeneration. So I just really like that combination. And of course, you know, when your, your opponent is under pressure, you can use those Bolts to maybe finish the game. Uh, which is quite nice. I'm also liking the two fireballs because like later in the game when you've got a lot of mana, that can be like a win, you know? It's just an alternative win con. Um, for me, when I'm looking at this deck without ever having played it, I'm looking at it now for the first time, is, you know, I'm thinking I would definitely add some kind of mana ramp in here. You know, you've got a lot of expensive stuff. Maybe even mana vaults could work in here. Um, there is a soul ring in here. But I mean, I would consider doing that. I, I would probably play with Dark Rituals just because they go so well with Hypnotic Specters and Sangiers. Of course, a Dark Ritual and a Nightmare, they don't really get along that well. Talking about that Nightmare, and this is quite interesting. You may think you're playing three colors. Why would you play a Nightmare? I think Nightmare can work in these builds because first off, it's only one black to, to play, one black and five. Uh, of course, power and toughness equals to Swamp, so that's not always in your advantage. But... If you're playing with all the dual lands that that have their black uh, counterpart and which which I believe Justin is, then you actually have most of your lands actually make a black mana, so they count up for that um, you know for that nightmare count, which is quite nice. Yes, City of Brass doesn't count, and I think there are also plateaus in here that don't count, but all the other lands do. So he's really heavy uh, committed to the black mana, and he can produce black mana quite quickly and quite easily so i mean it's not going to be a problem for him to have a big nightmare on the board despite the fact that he's playing with three colors i mean white and red here to me are really his support colors also because he only needs one red to cast everything and one white to cast all his white spells so you know he doesn't really have to commit to those colors so i'm you know i'm liking it and i'm actually hoping that we're going to see a nightmare because i mean i love it I, you don't see it that, that often especially at a tournament so i mean go for it justin Go for it. And, and talking about go for it, we've discussed his deck. We've discussed the deck of Denzel. So let's start with our, round number one of the Zombie Cup 2 here in Zandam. Game number one. Here we go. We're seeing Justin taking a mulligan, by the way. He's sitting on the right. And he's playing his uh, Vampires and uh, Nightmares deck. So it's white, black, and red. It also has some red in there. And he's taking on Denzel. He's sitting on the left. He's on the play here, starting with the Lanora Elves into a Pendlehaven into a Lanora Elves, I should say. He's playing Red Green Ponza. We see Justin here opening with a Willow to Wisp, passing the turn. I believe uh, Justin is playing a full play set of Willows, which is pretty cool. Again, something you don't see every day. And, oh, there we see a strip mine taking care of the Badlands. Is he going to attack here? He can pump it, of course, with the Pendlehaven deal too. Or does he have better options? Looks like he's got better options. Another Lanawar. And I mean, is there not going to be an attack? That would be quite odd. I mean, you've got basically a free attack. I don't expect Justin to chump here. And if he does, then he loses the uh, Lanawar. So no attack, interesting. So just a pass. I wonder why there's a Badlands here, a new one for Justin. Can now keep regeneration mana open. And I mean, if Justin can now find a land, you know, he could potentially play out an Urnum. I believe he's playing with uh, two Urnums main. Also playing with Suchis, by the way. There's the, uh, not the attack, tapping two. Ooh, getting back here to strip mine. That is dirty. Now he's going to strip the Badlands again. My, my, my. That is, <laughs> that is nasty. Remember, he's also playing with four Stone Rains and four Ice Storms. Again here to pass. 
I wonder why he's not attacking. Maybe maybe he believes that the Willow is like a 1-1 or something. Anyway, there's a new Badlands. Badlands number 3 by Justin. Just keeps playing him. Trying to stay in there. There's the untap. Are we going to see an Ice Storm or maybe a Red Swords and a Stone Rain? There's a Taiga. Tapping 3, tapping 4. Okay, there's an Urnum. And of course that Urnum is good, but Justin has that black mana to regenerate the Willow so he can just block the Urnum. Let's take a look what Justin's going to do here. There's a Plateau. Now remember, Justin also has quite a lot of removal in his deck. He's playing with uh, four, exactly, I want to say four swords, but we see uh, a Lightning Bolt here instead, taking care of the Llanowar. He's playing with four Lightning Bolts and four Swords to Plowshare, so he's got a lot of answers to creature threats. There's a Mountain here. So Denzel a little bit in the tank. Okay, so there's a uh, a Bolt, and now we can regenerate it, of course, but then the Willow is tapped because of the regeneration. So, I mean, he, he should tap the Willow. He doesn't, but it, I think the players are doing this verbally. They're explaining what's happening. So, uh, just taking the damage here as he should. Going to go down to 15. Not using the Pendlehaven, by the way, here to pump the Llanowar. I'm a little bit surprised he could have done an extra damage. He's kind of missed a lot of moments here where he could have done damage. And it may not seem that important, but on the long run, that could just make the difference. You know, there are so many games that are decided or one or two points of damage. Here we see Justin tapping the Swamp. Okay, there's a Swords. Okay, man, you need, <laughs> you need white mana here. Oh, man. So he's tapping the Swamp. I have no idea why. Anyway, there's the pass. But I mean, he's got the Plateau anyway, but I, of course, should tap the Plateau for white mana to cast that sort of Plowshares. And uh, tapping here the Taiga, what are we going to see? Okay, there is a Scavenger Folk. So this is a 1-1 one, one from the dark. You can pay one green and tap to sacrifice it to destroy target artifact. It's pretty sweet. Pretty good card, very useful against uh, players that play with like Moxin or other mana rocks and try to accelerate very quickly. Very nice in combination, of course, with that land destruction uh, package in the deck of Denzel. Ooh, here we see Nebnotic Spectre. That could make a dent here on the plans of Denzel. And now this is where that lightning bolt that he played earlier on the Willow would have been really useful. There we see a, uh, a Mishra's Workshop, so he can tap that to cast artifacts. He's playing with uh, four Black Vices and also four Suchis. There's the attack. He's got, of course, the Pendlehaven. So probably Justin should just block with the Willow and take the rest of the damage. Let's see what he's going to do. So he's going to put the Willow in front of the Scavenger Folk. Now we see the Pendlehaven being activated, of course, on the Llanowar. So uh, two damage here for Justin. Justin, of course, regenerating the Willows. He's going to go down to 13. That's it. No other play. So that means that Denzel's going to lose a card here, probably. Unless, of course, one of the cards in hand is a bolt. He can play that at instant speed. So this is going to be an important moment here for the game. If Justin can attack and take out a card here and start like attacking the hand size of Denzel, then he's got a chance of taking over this game. And remember, he's playing four Sengirs and he almost has five lands here. He can start casting his Sengir Vampires. That would be another big problem for Denzel. So the Hippie are going to be turned sideways. Denzel dropping here to 17, it seems. Or 22, of course. He got, he got some... Uh, Life earlier from the uh, Swords to Plowshares. And Denzel, you're going to lose a Crumble. Not too bad here against Justin's deck. Justin hardly has any artifacts in his list. Well, that's not entirely true. He's playing with three Gem Day Tomes. So he could be good for the Tomes and one Soul Ring, I believe. Ooh, look at that. There is a Wheel of Fortune. I'm expecting him here to cast his wheel. He's thinking... Ooh, this is risky. I mean, do you want to tap your red source? 
Because if you find a bolt, you can bolt the hippie. Yeah, I would probably do the same. I would have also tapped the Pendle Haven or maybe the Lunar Rail. It's probably better to just tap the Pendle Haven. Are we going to see a response here? Perhaps another bolt in hand here for Justin. Are we going to see a bolt on one of the two creatures or on the life total? Probably going to go. I would go on the Lanarer. Oh, it's, it's a Swords instead. So Swords here on the Lanarer Elves. So he's going to have a green floating and he's going to gain a life. We're going to go up to 23. And look at that. Justin also losing two books. I mean, he finally had enough mana to kind of start casting those books and maybe get some uh, advantage out of them. But it's not meant to be. Now remember, Denzel's also playing with four black vices in his deck. But I think the first thing that he wants to find here is a lightning bolt, of course, to kill that hypnotic specter. I mean, he also has script sprites, so script sprites could be like a chum blocker, perhaps. And later on, when he untaps the, the Pendlehaven... You know, he can actually block and kill a Hypnotic Spectre. Gonna tap three. Okay, he had the one green floating, so then he can cast a Suchi. But that's not an answer to the Hypnotic Spectre, though. Tapping. What are we gonna see? Yep, there's the bolt. Okay. Problem solved, it seems. So, pretty good turn here, actually, for Denzel. Manage to draw a lot of new cards, deal with Hypnotic, get an extra threat on the board. Passing the turn back to Justin, but of course Justin's going to draw a card for turn as well. So he's got eight cards now to do, uh, to do some, to do some cool stuff with. There's a swamp to uh, to start. Now he's got five lands. Remember, four Sengirs in his deck, so he could cast perhaps a Sengir Vampire here. You four four, epic creature. Tapping two instead. Okay, there we're going to see the sinkhole. He's got a single sinkhole in the deck. Going to destroy the uh, workshop here of Denzel. There is another willow. And a swords to plowshares on the Suchi. And that is the thing, of course, of the, uh, the deck of Justin. He's got a lot of answers. So he can really slow Denzel down here. And you would think, looking at the lists of the players, that the longer the game takes, the better it is for Justin. But remember, Justin already lost two Jam Day Tomes. They're in his graveyard. And that's really an important card for him to kind of get advantage of the control. Get that card advantage train going and kind of winning because you've got more cards than your opponent. Kind of like a Dedekish strategy. Oh, need the Zelda. Yeah, that's right. And now Denzel kind of in the in the tank weighing his options. I mean, if he has, for example, another bolt, one of the things he could do is first attack with the scavenger folk and see if Justin bites. If he blocks and regenerates, then he's got no mana left anymore to regenerate his, uh, his willows. So then maybe you can play a bolt and remove one of the willows. That could be a line of play, but of course, maybe he's got like an urnum in hand. He just wants to put an urn urnum on the table. Gonna tap three here. Perhaps a Blood Moon. And is Blood Moon the right thing to do here? Okay, it's an Ice Storm instead. Of course, it hasn't played out a single Ice Storm or a single Stone Rain thus far. This is the first Ice Storm. Playing a full play set of both. Now, of course, he can make a Regeneration Shield on one of the Willows in response. That's exactly what he does. And there's the attack. It's probably going to block on the Willow with the Regeneration Shield. Or maybe Justin thinks, you know what, I'm just going to take the damage because I don't want to take the risk of losing my, my Willow here. That's exactly what he does. He's so going to take a damage, go to 12, and then Denzel's playing another threat. There's a Script Sprites and a pass turn. So Justin here, four lands, needs land number five to kind of start playing out his stronger, bigger creatures. Wonder what he's going to do here. Okay, there's land number five. I believe...
think there are four cards in hand for Justin. Ooh, tapping the full five. Full sin. There we go. Sengir Vampire. I love this. And I mean, whenever somebody plays Sengir against me and gets a counter on it, I buy you a beer. I don't mind. I don't mind. And if you don't drink beer, don't worry. I'll buy you something else. But you get a drink. I, I think you deserve a drink if you can get a counter on the Sengir. That's just my opinion. Anyway, there we see the Soul Ring here by Denzel. Remember, Denzel also plays with two Fireballs. Actually has enough mana now to kill the uh, the Sengir Vampire with a Fireball. And I believe he does have a Fireball in hand, so that could be a line of play. Another thing he can do, maybe he's contemplating that too, is take out both the Willows with a single Fireball. I mean, that is really good value on the other hand. The thing that's going to kill you, the thing that's going to be the problem long term is that Sengir Vampire. If you have two fireballs in hand, because he's playing with two, maybe he's got both of them in hand, then I would consider maybe taking out the double willow and then next turn play out the, the other fireball. But I mean, that's highly unlikely, you know, that he has both in hand. We see one here. We also see, yeah, he's going to tap for five. I think he's just going to take out the Sengir, which I understand. Exactly, he's going to take out the, the Sengir. Also has a Lightning Bolt in hand. So, I mean, I understand that he needs a moment here to think because it must be very tempting to just, you know, hit the um, the two Willows because another line of play would have been, you know, hit hit both the Willows. I believe then you have enough mana to keep one red open. Uh, and when your opponent attacks, you can you can block with the Script Sprites and then kill it together with the uh, with the Lightning Bolt. And you could, you could still take down the Sengir, but then that is, of course, a two for one. He would see a Pendlehaven coming in, and he's going to attack with both here. So, I mean, that's a nice silver lining of this choice as well to go for the Sengir, you know, and that is that you can attack the same turn as well with your creatures, dealing three points of damage here, and that is not nothing. He's going to drop to nine. And, I mean, Justin really, like, needs more bigger creatures, but he's got six mana. What is costing six mana in his deck? Are we going to see it? Oh, Nightmare! I love it, man. I love it. And it's actually a 5-5. Plateau doesn't count here, but the other the others do. And he's showing this here to Denzel. So it's uh, it's a nice 5-5 flying creature, which is really sweet. And remember, um, you know, Denzel just played out his Fireball to get rid of the Sengir. And now even a bigger problem emerges, uh, you know, from the darkness. I, I think, I think uh, you know, Justin's deck is really thriving at this point. You know, having 5-6 lands is really good for him. And there we see a Blood Moon. So the Blood Moon, it, it's interesting. It is going to make the Nightmare a little bit smaller. So now it's a 4-4. Because the dual land that's underneath the uh, the scrub land, I believe, that's underneath the swamps here, that's going to be turned into uh, the Badlands. The Badlands is going to be turned into a mountain. So he's got two mountains now and four swamps. There's a Black Vice. That's not going to do much, though. Maybe I would have kept it in hand, to be honest. Because it's not doing anything, so... But hey, it's out. There we see the mountain. And I mean, I believe the Pendlehaven, of course, is now also a mountain. Attacking with both here because Denzel has that lightning bolt in hand. So now, of course, he can play that bolt. Another damage here. There's the bolt on the Nightmare, so the Nightmare is going to die. The problem here for Denzel, for Denzel, though, is that he's out of cards. And he doesn't really have any card draw in his deck, I believe. He's already played out the wheel. I mean, the wheel is his big card draw card, but, I mean, that's that's done. He's also already played out the regrowth, so he cannot regrowth the, the wheel anymore. So, yeah, it's it's, it's kind of tough here on, on the card draw department for Denzel. No Sylvans in his deck, for example. There's going to tap two, going to take a damage from the City of Brass. So he should go to seven here, playing the Demonic Tutor. I really wonder what he's going to look up. I mean, maybe maybe he's just going to look up a Sengir, you know? I mean, he can play it straight away. It's another threat on the board. The thing here, of course, is, though, that, uh, that Denzel is already on 27. So maybe I would just... Oh, he's going to do this? Really? A wheel? Oh, <laughs> Really? Okay, oh no, for a moment I thought he was going to play the wheel, showing the wheel. 
I think I would consider going for a Gem Day Tome here. I believe it's got one more left in the deck. And I mean, it's it's such a kind of a set board state here that it's it's really good for him now to play out, uh, you know, a, a potential Gem Day Tome because he's not under pressure. And then he can just start twi start drawing twice as many cards as, as his opponent. And that will definitely uh, grant him the victory. But maybe he's got a better option. Just really curious to see what he picked. And I mean, both players here, by the way, they're both, uh, you know, from Sandam, from the zombie crew, and they know each other quite well. So, you know, for them, it's like a, a Friday night magic uh, game. So there's the one card here. What is it going to be? Oh, it's a Sengir. I like it. Style points. <laughs> so he did go for that Sengir, like immediate pressure. Didn't go for that control play. And now, I mean, Denzel needs that luck to now just have that instant answer. But I don't think it is. Nope, he's just passing the turn. So that means that Justin can start attacking here with the uh, Vampire dealing four points of damage a turn. I mean, that's a uh, pretty substantial. Going to draw a card for turn. Probably going to turn this Sengir sideways. So that means Denzel's going to drop here from uh, 27 to 23. There's a mountain in the pass. Now I really wonder what that one card in, Denzel, in Denzel's hand is. Perhaps it's just a land. There's the attack. More damage. Let's see. What is that one card that he just drew? Counting his mana. Is he tapping everything? What is it? I don't believe he plays with a drain life, right? Perhaps I missed it. Changing his mind, passing the turn. He is also playing with fireballs, by the way. So perhaps uh, he can also cast a fireball. There's another attack here with the Sengir. I mean, look at the life totals dwindling there of Denzel's going quite quick. Already on 15. I mean, Denzel's losing this game here. I mean, at the start of this, this first game, you really thought Denzel was going to take it. But Justin was able to stabilize and now kind of take over the game. Tapping five. Has to take another damage, though. Oh, no, of course not, because I'm forgetting we've got a Blood Moon in, in play, so it's just a mountain. That's also why he didn't take damage earlier. Sorry, guys, for my mix-up. So uh, you're correct being at eight. There's another Vice, so the Vices are just not doing a lot here. And it's looking really bad here for Denzel. I mean, there are now two Sengirs going to swing in for eight. So that means Denzel's going to drop here to three. Oof. That is tough. That is rough, man. There we see a tap of five. There's the fireball. Finishing the job. And I thought earlier, right, when he was counting his mana, you kind of know, uh-oh, he probably has some kind of X spell. And he did. That was the fireball. So... Justin here winning game number one. But remember, this is just the first game. This is a best of three match here in uh, in the first round of the, uh, the Zombie Cup number two. So we're going to let these players shuffle up in sideboard. And we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. Justin, of course, on the draw after winning that first game. So he's one game up. Look at that. Taking a mulligan again, just like in game one. Denzel on the play, starting with the Lanawar Elves. This is what his deck wants to do. Hopefully, ramp into land removal, right? He's got four Stone Rains, four Ice Storms. There we see a Badlands on the side of Justin. Ooh, tapping here. There's a Bolt. Not a Bolt the Bird, but a Bolt the Elf. You kind of have the same effect. There's a Mountain and just a Pass. So no more Mana Dorks, no Scavenger Folks, no nothing. Just a Pass. So that's uh, giving Justin a little bit of breath. What can he do with this turn? There we see a Scrubland. No Will of the Wisps, just a pass turn. There's another mountain. Are we going to see, yep, a Stone Rain here. What would have been really good as well, I guess, is a Bad Moon, right? Because the, uh, sorry, a Blood Moon, because a Blood Moon would take care, of course, of both dual lands. But a Stone Rain also does the job. There we see a Swamp. And I mean, we know the list of Justin. He really needs more mana, right? He wants to cast Sangir Vampires and Nightmares. 
at least go up to three mana so he can play a Hypnotic Spectre. Another Stone Rain here, so only one Swamp left for Justin. This could be a really rough game for him. And I think the thing that Denzel now wants to do is put some pressure on the board. I mean, this is something, right? The script sprites, hopefully you can find a Pendlehaven, pump it a little bit, deal some damage. And if you're Justin, you just want to top deck Lance, but it's not happening for him. Just another pass here. And he's really, I mean, Denzel, or Justin's really in trouble now. Just has to hope that Denzel cannot put more pressure on. I mean, as long as it just stays with this one point of damage a turn, it's, it's not that bad. There's a regrowth. Ooh, probably going to regrowth land removal here. That is brutal. So next turn, he's going to destroy another land regardless. Yeah, this is really tough here. There's a discarding of the Jam Day Tome. This is really tough here for Justin. There's the attack. Going to drop to 18. Denzel also a little light on lands. There, of course, we see that land removal. It's not even the Stone Rain. <laughs> oh, it's the Ice Storm. So he still has that Stone Rain in hand. So, I mean, you kind of know that that Badlands is going to be destroyed now as well. There we see a Taiga. You kind of see Justin here flipping away his cards. He kind of knows, okay, this is going nowhere fast. Losing another land. It's going to drop to 17. I mean, this Crypt Sprites, it goes very slow, but it can do the trick, of course. There we see a Plateau. Probably a Swords here. Yep, there's the Swords on the Crypt Sprites. But I mean, if you're Denzel, you don't really mind it too much. Yep. Gonna untap here. There we see a sinkhole here, or sorry, a strip mine, of course, taking care of the plateau. And a Suchi. The Suchi is quite important. There we see a city of brass. Are we gonna see another Swords to Plowshares? I don't think so, just a pass. So if I was Justin, maybe I would have considered keeping the city in hand for when you draw into swords. Then again, I mean, yeah, I guess you just should play it out. Because also a disenchant gives you an option here to kill the uh, the Suchi. Oh man, there is a Blood Moon. What a killer, killer uh, turn here. What a killer game, I, I, I want to say, for Denzel here. Denzel really doing a good job here. Completely annihilating the mana base of Justin. Justin is just nowhere at this point. He has one mountain he can use. I mean, his graveyard is filled with lands. Taking more damage, going to drop to nine. And now it's going to go very fast. Only three turns left, it seems, for Justin. But if he can find, like, one white source, he can disenchant the uh, the Suchi. Discarding here the Gem de Tome, passing the turn. Yeah, those tomes are not great against these uh, land destruction decks. There's another attack. Justin dropping to five. There's a bolt. Going to drop to two. And... Okay, there's a bolt back. And there's a fireball ending this uh, second game. You're again ending on a fireball. But that means, ladies and gentlemen, that it is a 1-1. One -one. So we are going to go to game number three. Game number three. Here we go. So Justin on the play after losing that second game. Whoever wins this is going to win their first match here at the tournament. It's always a nice start. Again, a mulligan, though, for Justin. So in every single game, he's taken a mulligan so far. 1-1, one, one, lost one. Now he's on the play, so it it's always feels a bit tough when you take a mulligan then, you know, because you go down to five cards in hand after you've played your land. That's pretty rough. There we see a script sprites and a quick lightning bolt here on the sprites. There's the pass. I think, I mean, if you're Denzel, you don't mind it that much, you know, a bolt for a sprite. Of course, the sprite was quite nice with that panel haven on board as well. You could have started dealing two damage a turn. Ooh, a Whirling Dervish. That is pretty cool. Coming in from the sideboard, a quick bolt again on the Whirling Dervish. So Whirling Dervish, uh, two green for a card from Legends, a 1-1. One, one, and it's got protection from black. And every time it deals damage, it gets a plus one, plus one counter. So it's really good here against the deck of Justin. Because, I mean, his main 
you know, his main blocking creature early stages is the Willow the Wisp. And of course, the Whirling cannot be blocked by the Willow because of that pro black. Here we see a Blood Moon, by the way. And this Blood Moon is totally annihilating the mana base of Justin. Now, Justin all of a sudden has three mountains. And I mean, he needs white mana to get rid of the Blood Moon. And I don't believe he's got uh, basic planes in his deck. I believe maybe, maybe one that they didn't see on the deck photo. But I think his basic lands were swamps. So this could be quite tough here for uh, for Justin to find an answer here to that Blood Moon. And now the question is, can Denzel put some pressure on? Okay, there we see a Curd Ape coming in from the sideboard. So that Curd Ape, of course, is a 2-3. There we see a Bolt. So lots of Bolts here for Justin. The Bolts are kind of keeping him alive. Are we going to see an Ice Storm now? We are going to see an Ice Storm taking care of the Plateau, which is a mountain because of the Blood Moon. And there's the pass. There is another duel, which means another land. I mean, another mountain, I mean. I mean, if, if you're Justin, you really want to find those swamps, right? And, and, and preferably multiple ones, because then you can start playing out your nightmare, your, okay, there's a strip mine. You can start playing out your hypnotic specters, your sing gears. But, oh, man, look at this. Again, the mana bay is getting completely annihilated. There we see a city of brass, which is just a mountain. So, oh... Justin can do here is just pass turn. There's a vice. So this vice should, in theory, start working sooner or later. Again, the problem here for Denzel is that he's, he ran out of cards. Just a basic forest and a pass. So both players kind of in top decking mode. And, you know, all that, that Denzel has here to kind of deal some damage eventually is that one lonely vice. Even more lands, a mace, which is just a mountain. Also lands here for Justin. Is he finding a Gem Day Tome? Actually, this Gem Day Tome is not too shabby. It can help him to dig for answers and kind of get out of this mess. And I mean, Denzel hit a land pocket. He's, he's drawn like three, four lands in a row. Which is ideal for Justin. He's going to use the book here to draw cards. I mean, he's still on 20. He could take the damage. Can he find something useful? So I believe he's got five cards in hand, if I'm not mistaken. So next turn, he'll take a damage. And again, a pass by Denzel, not finding anything useful. So I believe he's going to take a damage here. Exactly, going to drop to 19, going to draw card number six. That's a swamp. Okay, that's something. I mean, if he gets one more land, he can potentially play a Nightmare, which would just be a 1-1. One -one. <laughs> that's... That is so funny. I mean, I think if I was Justin, I would just draw that extra card. You're on 19 anyway. There's the second Swamp, though. If he's got a Sengir, then Denzel is in serious problem, uh, trouble. Hypnotic, actually, also not ideal for, uh, for Denzel. Denzel still top-decking mode. Finding a Script Sprites. But remember, the Pendlehaven is a mountain because of the Blood Moon. So he cannot stop the Hypnotic Spectre. He's going to swing in here. More damage for Denzel. Dropping to 18. Going to tap 5. Are we going to see... Or is he just going to draw a card and then step? No, he's going to play a card. He's Sengir Vampire hitting the board. Wow. It's looking very bad for Denzel. He's going to tap 3. What are we going to see? Maybe some more land removal, but that's a little bit too late here. Okay, Wheel of Fortune. That's kind of cool. That wheel can change a lot. And here we see Justin thinking, can I do anything? Nope, he cannot. It's all white. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, those disenchants are useless if you don't have, like, basic planes or a Mox Pearl or whatever, but... Ooh, another Sangir. That was really good. So it's really good for, for Denzel that that's now out of the hand of Justin. So both players going to draw a fresh 7. Now remember, Denzel does have that uh, that Black Vice on board. So that means some damage here next turn for Justin. But I think if you're Denzel, you, you really want to find an answer to, uh, to the Hypnotic Spectre. And of course, uh, to the Sangir Vampire. Perhaps first the Hypnotic. Because that's going to take cards out of your hand. Yeah, these are not really the answers you're looking for. Two mana dorks. 
There's a soul ring. The question here is, does he have a fire bowl, for example? Or a lightning bolt? Okay, there are Sylvans in his deck. I actually thought there weren't, so I should have checked out his deck photo better. I apologize. So there are Sylvans in his deck. But he's just going to pass the turn now, it seems. And that's not going to be great for him next turn, you know, having to lose a card. Or did he already empty his hand? No, he's got two cards left there still. Or perhaps three. It's hard to see. First, now Justin's going to untap, take the damage from the vice. So he's going to drop to 16. There he goes, drawing card number eight now, probably. Exactly, and now he's got to find... Well, actually, he doesn't have to do all that much. I mean, preferably play out your hand, obviously, but, I mean, he can just attack with the Sengir and the Hypnotic. Those are pretty big problems for uh, for Denzel. Oh, <laughs> mind twist. Twisting away two cards that are not all too relevant, the Blood Moon and the Pendlehaven. And I'm expecting um, Justin to just swing in here with the Hypnotic Spectre and the uh, Sengir. I believe there's another Hypnotic Spectre in hand there. Yep, there he goes into combat. So he's going to attack with both. So that means Denzel's going to drop to 12. I think that the players right now are discussing what should happen with the Pendle Havens because the Pendle Havens are turned into basic mountains. So can they both still be on the battlefield? That's a question here. <coughs> I am not sure, actually. I wonder if they can still stay on the battlefield. It's not too relevant, though, for now. But it's an interesting question. Let me know in the comments below what you think. There we see a Will of the Wisp, by the way, hitting the board. I mean, there's just full control now at this stage for Justin. So despite that Blood Moon, he, he's kind of played through it. I think that Jam Tone was really crucial in this matchup because that really helped him to just, you know, accelerate a little bit, find that swamp a little bit uh, sooner. And now, of course, Denzel's going to look at the top three cards because of the Sylvan Library. So remember, he needs to put them back and just draw one. If he wants to draw an extra one, he needs to pay four life for every card. He could do that for just two cards max, so that would set him back to four. So he's just going to take the one. Ooh, he's going to take two. Does that mean that one of those cards perhaps is a burn spell? Maybe both are burn. He does have enough mana to fireball the Sengir. Bolt the other. Changing his mind, though, going back up to 12. I mean, I assume this is a playable card, right? Or else he wouldn't have taken it. He is going to take the card. So really, <laughs> really doubting it here. Going to take the mountain. Going to play out the other vice. He's going to attack here with both. That makes sense. At least he can deal one point of damage. So he's going to drop to... Uh, Justin's going to drop to 15, but it's looking really good for Justin. And it looks like Denzel's kind of in desperation mode here, trying to find a way out of it. I mean, I guess a potential win for Denzel could be if he finds a fireball and... You just squeeze in enough damage and then finish it off with the fireball. I mean, that's, that's kind of the line of play that he's looking for. He, he probably only has one more turn, though. There's the attack for six. Of course, Denzel can jump with the Strip Sprites. Going on the Sengir. So the Sengir gets a counter. So I would, I would, you know, Justin, you should get a beer from your opponent. You know, because this is this is cool. Making that, that Sengir a 5-5. Five, five. Those are old school goals, you know. That's what you want to do in life. So it's now a 5-5 five, five flyer. And I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's looking so bad for Denzel. He's on six. At least needs to find one answer next turn. Preferably an answer for the Sengir. 
And look at that. It looks like we've we've entered the last five turns of the game. So now there's some pressure here for Justin. Oh, there's a fireball though. Finishing the game again and in style, I guess, because every single game has been finished on a fireball here in this match. And uh, Justin here, congratulations, winning a game uh, or match number one of the uh, the first round of the uh, Zombie Cup. Number two, congratulations, Justin, with winning with your Nightmares and Vampires deck. And please join us again next week because then we are back with this matchup. There's a lot of mono black as the, at this Zombie Cup tournament, by the way. <laughs> I was playing mono red. I don't want to give more than that away, but I was one of the uh, one of the few players that didn't have black in his deck. And here we see two mono black decks uh, going mano a mano, and that is next week. We've got a mono black control deck with a lot of land removal in there, and also royal assassins, I'm liking it. And he's going to take on a more classical take on mono black, that's the mono black aggro deck. Looking quite dangerous. I am really liking that uh, frozen shade in the deck and that pestilence, but that's coming up for next week. Now, if you don't want to miss a thing, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Okay, and before you go, maybe you're already a sub. Thank you so much for that. Please leave a like, a comment, and share this video on your socials. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And then there's one last thing that you can do, and that is become a patron of the show. So if you enjoy the content that I make, please consider becoming a sponsor via patreon.com. And it already starts with just $1 a month. And for that dollar, you actually get a lot of perks. One of the perks is that you get access to the Dimmy Talks Discord server so you can talk with all the other patrons and also you can join in on all the online Timmy Talks events. So uh, please check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks for all the information. And now it is time to move on to the end scroll and take a look at our fantastic, wunderbar, amazing channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Here we go. <laughs> Ik het is, ik het is, somber gezien.